Hello coders, in the previous tutorial we talked about setting up our uh, menu controller script and we finished scripting that so now we get to move on to the transition component and figure out how we're going to code that up. So let's go ahead and take a look at our code for that. Here is the transition script. Now make sure you add this using statement for Unity Engine UI because we are going to be dealing with rec transforms, um, text and image components, data types. All right. Um, so the first thing we need to outline is our transition types. Okay, so these these are going to be enumerations. We have an out transition type and an in transition type. If you don't remember from before, our out transition type is going to be determining how the current page is going to be leaving the screen and the in transition type is going to be de determining how the new page is going to enter the screen. All right, once we define those, um, we're going to have to define a parent tag. Okay, so remember, when we spawn these objects, when we spawn these pages, we need to be sure that they're getting set um, to be child of the correct object. So whenever a, whenever a page first comes into the screen, they are going to have, uh, have no parent, and so they won't be a child of a canvas, and so you won't be able to see them. So we use this parent tag to be able to set the pages to be child of the canvas so they can be seen. And then we're going to have this vector3 for spawn, spawn position, which we briefly talked about in the previous tutorial. Um, essentially what this is going to be used for is giving your pages a default position to be spawned at. This could be used if you want to use some sort of transition where the page is coming in from outside the screen. Okay. So that's where you might use spawn position. Then we have a fade speed and a flicker uh, <laughs> a flicker rate float, um, and these are going to be used to determine how fast we want the fading animations or fading transitions to take place, or how fast we want the flickering transitions to take place. All right. Then we're going to have some booleans here, one for transition initialized, just as a safety precaution, so that we know that we're not doing anything with our pages until it's initialized. We have the start transition boolean, which is going to be set from the menu controller. If you remember from the previous tutorial, we say um, right down here we say t dot start transition. Okay, <clears throat> and so what that is doing is it's calling this method right here where we set start transition equal to true. All right, so we have that boolean for that. Then we have uh, these two floats here: in color alpha and out color alpha. Since my transitions have to do with fading um, and flickering. I'm going to be changing the colors of the pages themselves along with everything contained inside of that page. So all the texts and all the images, um, I'm going to be modifying those colors. So that brings us down to these arrays right here. I have two sets of arrays, one for text and one for image. Um, we're going to have the transition pages texts. We're going to have the current pages texts. We're going to have the transition pages images and the current pages images. Okay, So that's four arrays that we're going to be using. Um, we're going to look into what we're doing with those in just a moment. And then we have two rec transforms here, one for the transition page and one for the current page. Again, we're going to be modifying the position or, you know, depending on what kind of transition you want to add to the system, you might be modifying the, the position, the scale, um, the rotation. However, you, you might want to transition the page into the screen. These rec transforms are going to help with that. Okay, so let's look at our start event function. This is going to be the initial code that we're going to be setting up when the page comes into the screen. We're going to be saying um, if the out transition type is fade, we're going to set out color alpha to 1. All right, and the reason is because if our out transition type is fade, we are assuming that the color is, uh, or the, the images are going to be op opaque, and uh, the fade method is going to uh, slowly turn those colors transparent until you can't see the page anymore. We're going to set this page equal to get component rec transform and then we're going to fill our image and text arrays. Remember the images and text arrays are going to be for the current page and all we do is we say get components and children image, get components and children text. So you want to be sure that all the contents on each of your pages are child of that page for this to work. Okay if you remember from the last tutorial in the menu controller what we do is we um, we say current page equals t dot initialize transition page with this page. All right, and so this is that method in action right here. Uh, remember, we're going to be returning a page and we're going to be accepting a page. 
All right, so transition is the page we're accepting, the new page that we want to spawn. So what we do is we create a game object reference by saying instantiate transition as game object. And then we can get the transition page. Remember, this is a rec transform. We get that by saying game object dot get component rec transform. So now at this point we have the current pages rec transform and we have the transition pages rec transform. All right, and then what we're going to do is set the parent. Remember, the parent needs to be set to the game object with our parent tag, which is likely going to be menu. And then we set the scale to one, okay, because we want to make sure that our pages are staying the correct scale and they're not um, increasing or decreasing in scale based on the screen resolution. So we make sure we set our scale to what we want it to be initialized at. Um, and then we fill our uh, text and image arrays for our transition page. Okay, so at this point we have our all of our arrays for our images and our text filled. Um, so for our current page we have these filled and for our transition page we have these filled. And then what we want to do is whenever we first bring our our new page into the scene we want to make sure it's fully transparent because we might be doing some fading operations on them. Alright so the way we do that is we loop through each one of our transition arrays and we set the color of each one of those components to new vector 4 we maintain the R, the G, and the B components, but we're manipulating the A component of these colors. And so what we're going to do is we're going to modify by setting them all to zero. Thus, the whole page will be invisible. And even if you're not using any sort of fading for your transitions, um, it's not a bad idea to do this because it's ensuring, um, in fact, it's what's going to happen is you're your page is going to come in, your new page is going to come in on top of your current page and by bringing it in uh, fully transparent you can uh, have full control over how you want the transition page to come into the screen. All right. So if you want it to come in instantly then all you would do right after calling this method is setting the uh, the end color alpha, remember we have these two alpha values here, you would set the end color alpha to 1. And Actually we do that um, in the fade instant transition so we'll we'll talk about how we can do that in just a moment and then we set transition initialized to true because we know that we've initialized at this point and we're going to return transition page dot game object all right so after that we can look at here again we're going to use this method in the menu controller to start the transition whenever the time is right and let's look at our update event function here so we're going to say if the start transition transition is true then we're going to run a switch statement on both our out transition type and our in transition type. And based on those transition types, we're going to have a set of methods here that we might be running, okay, based on um, what our transition types are going to be. We're going to talk all about all these methods um, right now, actually, okay. So again, the update is going to be constantly checking which method to run. And let's first talk about. Um, the easiest one is going to be talking about fade instant. Okay, so remember what I was talking about. If you don't want any sort of fading, that what you can do is instantly set the the out color alpha to zero, or the in color alpha to one. Okay, so if you're using fade instant, then there's not going to be any sort of fading going on. All right, so let's look now at our fade page out and our fade page in method. All right, so fade page out right here. All we're doing is we're lerping the out color alpha to mathf.lerp out color alpha to zero. Okay, so whatever our out color alpha is, we're gonna be lerping that towards zero until our page is fully transparent. And we're gonna do that at a rate of a rate of fade speed times time dot delta time. So pretty straightforward right there. Um, our fade page in is a little bit different. It requires a little bit more. Our, so what we're gonna do is in color alpha equals lerp and we're gonna be lerping our in color alpha to one. So we're going to be making it um, more and more opaque as time goes on. We're going to do it at a rate of fade speed times time dot delta time. And then what we have to do is check. Um, we're going to have to set in color alpha to 1 because when in color alpha is 1, that's when we destroy our game object. Now, if you don't do this, if you don't set in color alpha to 1, then um, it's going to take a very long time for your in color alpha to get there, even though we're lerping to 1. It takes a long time because as Lerp approaches its target, which is 1, it slows down a lot. So what I do is I say if the end color alpha is greater than 0 0.99, which is pretty much 1, so you won't notice any jumping, 
I'm going to set end color alpha to 1. Now I know it's fully opaque and it's fully into the screen. When I know the new page, this is the transition page coming in, when I know that page is fully transitioned um, by this conditional statement, I know I can destroy the current game object. Okay, regardless of whether or not that one is done fading out or doing whatever it needs to do. All right, so I know I can destroy this game object, and then the page will be no more. All right, and then we have flicker out and flicker in methods. So let's take a look at these. These are I enumerators, and what I do with this is I do a loop, and I say yield return uh, yield return new wait for seconds, and I pass this frequency. This is how many. This is how much time is going to be. Um, this is how much time is going to be passed before we set the out color alpha to whatever we want. And then again, we're going to pass some more time before we set the out color alpha to another thing that we want. So what we're doing is we're constantly going back and forth between 0.35 and 0.8. So there's going to be a sort of flickering going on. And it's only, only going to be doing that um, for this duration of this loop. All right. And we don't need this line of code here. All right. So the uh, flicker in component is going to be similar. But what we're going to do is... Um, if it's flickering into the screen, we're going to be going back and forth between 0.35 and 1. And then what we're going to say is, um, we're going to say if our end color alpha is equal to 1, which is what it's going to end up at, uh, and it's only going to happen after this loop is done, then we're going to destroy this game object. Okay, so again, the, the end transition functions, if you haven't guessed yet, all your end transition functions are going to determine when the game object gets destroyed because naturally if you're if the transition page if the page that you're transitioning into the screen is ready to go then you know you can delete the uh, the previous page all right so you'll see up here in the update method that actually covers uh, each one of these I believe okay so that covers all of our transition types now if you look we have these methods getting run each time um, the each for each frame for each update frame. All right, so update transition page colors and update current page colors. So let's see what we're doing there. All right, so all we're doing is we're checking first to see if our arrays are null. And if they're not null, then we're going to loop through our arrays and we're going to modify the color. And all we're doing is we're for our transition page colors, we're passing the end color alpha because it's the page that's coming in. And for our update current page colors, we're doing the same exact thing, um, being sure to work on the proper arrays, but we're going to be passing out color alpha to the alpha component of these colors. All right. And after you have all of that, you're actually done with your transition, um, your transition component. Now back at Unity, what it's going to look like whenever you, whenever you're looking at your pages, you're actually going to have this transition component on each of them and you'll be able to set the out transition type and the in transition type of each of these and then the parent tag is going to be set to menu if you look up at our menu controller here our tag is set to menu alright so that's important and that's why it's being set child of that now looking at our uh, menu controller you can see that we talked about this in the previous tutorial although I didn't cover it um, in detail so this is what it's going to look like. You have the first page here. This is actually the prefab. You can see it lighting up over here. Now our page names are strings, and I'm making it to where it matches the uh, the corresponding element in the pages array. So first is the first, second is second. All right, so you can see how that works right there. But again, um, for your transition component, you can modify these to be whatever you want. Now if I uh, if you look at the second prefab I have here, you can see the spawn position, okay? So what I did was I set the spawn position for this one to be offset by negative 100 and negative 100. So if I move to the second page, you'll actually see it's offset a little bit. And there it is, you can see it's offset. And remember, we're using offset min and offset max to dictate that. And so what you're actually seeing is a space of negative 100 on the Y from the anchors to the page and a, sp a spacing of negative 100 from the, um, on the X axis from the anchors to the page. Okay, so that's what you're seeing right there. All right, now that's going to cl conclude this tutorial. On the next tutorial, we're going to talk about our dynamic listener, which is going to go on each of our buttons. We're going to go ahead and code that one up. 
Um, but if you like this tutorial, go ahead and drop a like. And as always, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.